All right, so this is really the last part of my video on how to compute the triple integral over this solid of this function. We're not going to do any more integration here. We're just going to reflect on what happened. Because I know that one question you were asking is, given some integral that you have to do, how do you know which way to set it up? And the answer is, the short answer is, you really don't. You have to try some things out before you can know for sure. But there are some clues that you can look for that will tell you things that might be good to try. For example, why did the spherical integral work so well? Well, part of the reason it worked so well was because my density function was something that is fairly obviously in terms of spherical coordinates. This is really just a code word for rho. So in looking at that, I see that I could put it in cylindrical, I could keep it in Cartesian, but it's a lot easier to work with if it's in spherical coordinates because this is just describing distance from the origin. Anytime you're given a problem in which distance from the origin or from a specific point for that matter is the key quantity, that's a clue that you should probably try spherical. In fact, you should probably try it first. It's not always guaranteed to work because the integral may still be hard to evaluate even if you set it up geometrically the natural way, but it's a good thing to try. Okay, so criteria number one for what to choose. Look at the integrand. That is the function you're integrating. And see if that tells you anything about how you should set it up. In this case, we were talking about distance from the origin, so spherical, natural choice. If this had been just square root of x squared plus y squared without the z squared, that would have been the distance from the z-axis, and cylindrical probably would have been a much more natural choice. So that's the first thing to look for. The other thing to look for is the region. Look at the region. In this case, the region was a cone, something that had perfect rotational symmetry around the z-axis. In a lot of cases, that means cylindrical is the way to go, and it turned out that cylindrical worked for us pretty well. Spherical also is a good way of taking advantage of rotational symmetry around the z-axis, although to be honest, spherical is a better choice whenever your region has perfect rotational symmetry around the origin, no matter which way you rotate, not just this one. In this case, we tried it though, and it worked pretty well, and the reason that spherical worked pretty well was because I could come up with really clean and simple bounds for the radius variable, rho. I know that I'm always going to start integrating from the origin, and I'm going to go out until I hit a boundary. But when I go out in this figure, no matter which direction I go out in, the thing that's going to stop me is always going to be this horizontal plane here, which means I'm always going to have the same outer limit for rho. Now, if I created something different here, this is kind of a silly example. Uh, actually, let me see if I can come up with one that isn't quite so silly. Just a minute. Okay, well this is kind of an obvious one. But if I put a region Actually, let me No, I thought of one that would work well. Here's one that would work pretty well as an example. Suppose your region looks like this. It's a cone sitting on top of a cylinder. If I have a figure that looks like that, cylindrical may be a pretty decent way of going about this because you have a consistent lower limit. It's this disk here, a lower limit for z, that is. z is going to be equal to zero. And your top limit for z is going to be given by whatever this cone is. It's not easy, but it does work. And you only require one integral because you have the same lower and the same upper throughout the region. But for spherical, this is going to be an absolute nightmare. Because if I start at the origin and go out in this direction, the thing that stops me is going to be this cylinder, and I have to find a way to write that in spherical coordinates. If I go in a direction nearer the z-axis, the thing that stops me is going to be a cone, and I have to find a way to write that in spherical coordinates. That means that I'm probably going to have two integrals, one for values of phi, the angle that take me towards the cylinder, and another one for values of phi that take me towards the cone. I really don't want to do that. But in the case of the cone that I drew, it turned out spherical is a pretty good choice because my outer boundary is always that horizontal plane that z equals 2. So in summary, I realize this is vague advice, but there's no computer algorithm for choosing the best method of integration. I mean, after all, we did two that worked, and really the one that works best depends on whether you like square roots or trig functions better. But rule of thumb, when deciding which coordinate system to use, look at the integrand, and see if there's something that really naturally converts to spherical or cylindrical coordinates. And number two, 
look at the region and see if you're going to be able to do the whole thing in one integral without having to do a piecewise boundary, like deal with this and then this separately. It turns out a cylindrical integral where z runs from the bottom to this top cone surface works pretty well, depending, of course, on what the density function is. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I realize there are no easy answers to this stuff, but I hope that seeing me work through this problem and hearing my thought process helped jar a few things loose. Anyway, feel free to comment if you have questions. I will try to answer them the best I can. But uh, other than that, good luck with the prep assignment, and I'll see you next week.